Welcome to the Kaiju Planet. My name is Arlo, and we are here with our very first video review. Yay! So, <laughs> today we'll be reviewing the Sideshow Collectibles Godzilla Maquette, released earlier this summer in July. Now, I've had this piece for over a couple of weeks already. Um, got it on Wednesday, August 19th, which was my 24th birthday. Yay! <laughs> so, you know, as you can see here, it's a huge box. It came in a typical Sideshow Collectibles brown box, straight from the factory, I assume. Uh, it was like, I don't know, three by three feet. I'm not sure, but, you know, but, yeah, big box. <laughs> Can't express that enough. But, despite the huge size of the box, it's very well designed. I mean, you got, uh, let's see if I can get around here, people. Uh, you got a huge image of Godzilla, the big G, as you know, on the front with the name stretched across the you know top, and then around here you got King of the Monsters plus you know plus a radio tower sending out you know radio signals. I assume you know, uh, and then throughout the box there's a bunch of Japanese text. And such, and then on the back you have another Godzilla title right there. Let's see, um, and on the bottom, I don't know if you can see. On the bottom, it says Sideshow logo right there and maquette. And when you switch to the bottom, there's all the legal material here, sideshow.com, legendary pictures logo, Godzilla, product license logo, Warner Brothers, and on the bottom of the box too there is a number. Now there are 750, seven, let me say that again, 750 pieces of this statue made and I got number 40 out of the 750 total, which is pretty good in my opinion, you know. So now that we've covered the box, let us cover the actual statue itself. And ta-da! Here is the actual Godzilla maquette. Now this thing looks absolutely gorgeous in person. I can't express that enough. You know, pictures and video by this, you know, cannot, you know, will not do this thing justice. It's something that you have to, you know, see in person to really appreciate. And, my gosh, it is big. Godzilla stands at around two feet tall from the bottom of the base to the tip of his snout. And he is pretty solid, too. He's sculpted out of, I would assume, like a polystone, polyresin. I, not big. This is my first technically my first statue so I'm quite new to this and I intend to get sideshow specific rim stuff eventually as well but I just had to start out with Godzilla <laughs> so yeah Godzilla is two feet tall and when he comes out of the box he's in two pieces you have the main body and then you have the base as well and to attach Godzilla to the base there's a peg on the bottom of his right foot and you insert that into the base and it really it holds up pretty well I mean Godzilla's tail is not even touching the top of the table here it's it's like holding up you know above just above it and it's pretty neat um, so sculpt wise you know it's not as detailed as the X plus 30 centimeter Godzilla 2014 but I think in my opinion that the Sideshow maquette has a greater presence and the head sculpt on this particular statue is for, you know in my opinion it's better than the X plus okay I'm gonna yeah I know I'm gonna get rocks thrown at me for that one but you know I don't care I love this thing uh, so the head sculpt is pretty more it's much more accurate in design than the X plus figure and you know, it's one of the reasons I like this thing too. Um, the dorsal plates, they're pretty accurate for the most part, except for some of the ones on the side here, which 
don't have any jaggedness to them. It's just like they're plain, you know, triangular shaped, which, I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it, it is a maquette. It's a statue. Creative liberty, you know, creative liberties are going to be taken. So I'm not going to give it points. I'm not going to put points against it for that. Um, but yeah, everything about this statue, I mean, you know, it looks pretty, you know, pretty well done. Um, have no major complaints whatsoever. Um, right now, we can, now that I've covered pretty much the sculpt, I can cover the, you know, smaller details. Now, let's take a look at that. Now, as far as I can tell, a lot of the skin detail is pretty much spot on to the actual, you know, actual, you know, CG model that we see in the movie. Um, in regards to color, it definitely is a little brighter than it should be, but I think that is a means to show off the details a bit more than if it were completely, you know, dark and, you know, light doesn't bounce off it quite well. I don't know. It's a de it's certainly a creative choice that with in regards to the color, but, you know, under certain lighting, it can look pretty dark and menacing and ominous so again no major points against it for that um, what else you know and also some collectors have noted the the little dirt like or dust between the some, certain details on the skin um, I think that's meant to give Godzilla a more dirty appearance like as if he just came rose from the you know, rose from the debris or ashes, something like that. I mean, honestly, I could do a little bit without the, you know, dust aspect of this, but I think it works well when trying to show off a lot of the details, especially the very minimal details that you see, you know, on this thing, which I'll show in a moment. As I've said, the head of the Sideshow Collectibles maquette actually looks, uh, you know, more screen accurate than that of the Godzilla that X Plus gave us. Uh, one of the things I really love about this sculpt, well, at least the head sculpt in particular, is that the interior of the mouth is very glossy and gives a more, you know, moist, uh, you know, wet, fleshy appearance, which really contrasts well with the rough, you know, outer skin of the, you know, creature itself. The teeth also are, you know, sculpted and painted individually as well with, you know, a yellowish brown gold, you know, paint with a glossy texture. You know, it looks pretty good and authentic. The eyes, the eyes are not as glossed as the inside of the mouth or not as glossed as you see on see them on X Plus figures, unfortunately, but they are still pretty well detailed. They are pretty much white with brown irises and black pupils, and it really gives Godzilla a bit of emotion when he's bellowing out his distinctive roar in that fashion. It's one of my favorite aspects about this figure is the pose, the you know, the roaring pose. As I've said earlier, Godzilla, the Sideshow Godzilla maquette actually has some really nice detailing when you look at it very up close. Now, as I zoom in, you'll start to see a lot of skin details, you know, like a lot of like detailing in the skin, which is actually pretty neat. Some people have claimed that this sculpt is way too smooth and for some of the details, like the scales and the folds and the you know the spines, I can somewhat agree, but you know I do not agree on the fact that this lacks detail. This statue is really detailed on a minute level. The display base for the maquette is is really well done too. 
It's supposed to replicate a destroyed set part of the city or essentially just generic debris, rubble, collapsed buildings and whatnot. But it's it's well sculpted, but you know, I wish there was a bit more variety of detailing or paint, I mean, in regards to some of the debris. On the prototype that we saw at San Diego Comic-Con 2014, there is a lot more variety of colors, especially like bricks and other building chunks that are highlighted in color. But on the final product, it's pretty much uh, all like dark gray, brown, and nothing, there's none that's too bright or not as detailed as what we saw in the prototype, but still, it's pretty well done overall and very convincing debris. Kudos for our side, kudos to Sideshow for that. Around the side of the display base, you'll start to notice that it's it's supposed to resemble a nuclear bunker or something of the sort. Here you would see like a door that's meant to slide and then you have the nuclear radiation symbol right here which is a nice touch. Um, you know personally I think this is supposed to resemble the nuclear you know nuclear power plant you know door you know locks and doors from the start of the movie at Janjira. I don't know if that's supposed to be it, you know, specifically, but if, but that's what I was reminded of when I saw this. And it's, you know, really nice and it's a good throwback to the movie. So, to wrap things up, I think Sideshow Collectibles did a pretty decent job with this maquette. It's big, imposing, very solid, very well detailed, you know, pretty much the whole package. Um, some of the minor complaints like the lighter color and the softer details, I can understand why some fans may not entirely appreciate this piece as much as I do. I tend to look th at this thing as if it was a piece of art rather than a completely 100% movie accurate product. Um, I mean, a maquette is technically supposed to be something of like an early, like a large scale statue that you would see in early film production, like for a movie on the scale like Godzilla. So that's how I tend to look at it, and that's why I can really appreciate it for the way for what it is. And for me, I think it's well worth it. Now, for those not willing to spend eight hundred plus dollars for something like this, um, Sideshow Collectibles, as of Thursday. September 3rd, they would be putting up another Godzilla statue up for pre-order. And this particular one is smaller at 14 inches in height, but the details and the details are far sharper and the paint is darker. It is a much more film accurate design or replica, I should say, of the creature. Now, even though I have this one, I am still going to go for the smaller one just so it can be a companion piece to this one. Uh, with that being said, you know, yeah, you know, that I'll call it quits for that review. <laughs> so, yep. Sideshow Collectibles Godzilla Maquette, everyone. Love it or hate it. Whatever. <laughs>
a review coming your way quite soon. Until then, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much and have a nice day.